hallelujah, my hallelujah, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah, oh. You deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, yeah. You, you deserve, deserve it. it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to Verse 5 says, The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. I pray for you. The staff of the wicked that is stretched into any area of your life, let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. The staff of the wicked stretched into your getting married that have been hindering marriage, making marriage impossible, be broken in the name of Jesus. The staff of the wicked that have been used straight to your tummy, saying that womb will not carry children. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. The staff of the wicked stretch into the work of your hands, your business, your career, your education, that it shall not move forward. Let that staff be broken in the name of Jesus. Wherever the staff of the wicked and the center of the rulers have been stretched, to set you back, to afflict you, this power, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. The world that be stretched to your body, making you to feel weak, making you to feel sickly, making you to feel fainted, this hour, let that start be broken in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, that that be stretched into your marriage, causing chaos in your marriage, making you and your spouse so uh, begin to quarrel and dislike yourself, let that star be broken in the name of Jesus. Uh -uh. The ones that have been stretched into your business, that is making you to count losses, business that you should be making profit, right now, let that star be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. 
let it be broken in the name of Jesus. And in that same Isaiah 14, in verse 2, it says in the latter part, it says, They shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. That is, those who took you captives before, you will now take them captive. You will now rule over your oppressors. In the name of Jesus, right now from this hour, the powers that have taken you captive, the powers that took your marriage captive, the powers that took your childbearing captive, the powers that took your finances captive, take them captive in the name of Jesus. Take them captive in the name of Jesus. What that means is that power is changing hands. And I say at this hour, because you are here, because you are connected to this program, let power change hands in the name of Jesus. All those who have been ruling over you. He says in another part, he says, and they shall rule over their oppressors who have been oppressing you, who have been sitting over your life, who have been sitting over your getting money, who have been sitting over your promotion, who have been sitting over your admission. Ah, right now, let that power change hands in the name of Jesus. Aha, begin to rule over them. Begin to step over them. Begin to match them. Begin to step over them. Begin to rule 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 over them. Let them be at your mercy. Let them be at your mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. As many as are sick right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because he was wounded for a transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. We command. He said, and by his stripes we were healed. By the stripes of Jesus. By the virtue that flowed from those stripes. We command to your bodies. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, no infirmity is permitted to remain in your body. Every infirmity, check out now. Every infirmity, check out now. Every weakness, check out now. Mental disorder, check out now. In the name of Jesus. Abnormal behavior, check out now. Down syndrome, check out now. I say down syndrome, check out now. Down syndrome, check out now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of he that made heaven and earth. That when he made man, he said it is good. There was nothing abnormal with man. Therefore, every abnormality in your body, every abnormality in your system, with your respiratory system, with your digestive system, with your reproductive system, right now, let it receive divine cure. Let every disorder begin to re regulate. Oh yes, let there be order in every disorder. In the name of Jesus, let the hand of God come upon you where you are. Let the hand of God come upon you where you are. Let it come upon you where you are. Let him heal you right now. From the crown of your head to your toes, be made whole. Every sickness that you came here with and that you are speaking, you are connecting with right now, let it disappear. Let the Lord make you whole. In the name of Jesus, I say be made whole. 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 In the name of Jesus, that satanic chain by your waist, I command it to break now. Satanic chain by your waist, I command it to break now. I say let it be broken now. 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 Break now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every strength thing that you consume, right now it must come out. That strength consumption must come out. Right now in the name of Jesus. I challenge that strength consumption. Right now through the mouth. I say be evacuated. By yearning, by sighing. That strength consumption. Let fire of God enter the tummy now. Let the hand of God go into the tummy. Let it pull out. That strength consumption. That which you ate. Strength you ate in your dream. Let it come out now. 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 Let it come out. Receive peace in your body. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, it is your hour. It's the hour of liberation. Come and liberate sons of men again. Come and liberate sons of men again. Have your way this hour. Let everyone who is hearing, who is watching, who is viewing, who is present right now receive your touch. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. Amen. Be seated. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today, somebody's songs of joy are going to increase. You have been singing songs of joy, but today, those songs of joy will increase. You have not been singing songs of joy before. You will begin to sing today. Your long-awaited testimonies, they are coming through today. Those pains in your body, today they are coming to an end. Those pains in your mind, they are coming to an end. In the name of Jesus. So God is going to visit somebody with good news today. He's going to visit somebody with good news. In the name of Jesus. I say somebody is going to be congratulated today. Somebody will be congratulated today. You will be congratulated. You will be congratulated. You will be congratulated. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is going to shout victory at last today. If you are that person, shout a louder hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I join you to shout also. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I shall be congratulated today. And today I will declare victory at last. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is opening a new chapter to the life of somebody today. And diverse progress shall begin to happen. Diverse testimonies shall begin to come in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The theme of the liberation R is release from spiritual wilderness. Release from where? Spiritual wilderness. This is what the destiny of some people are waiting for. Some people's destiny have been waiting for this hour because this is what must happen to them. This is what they have been touring mountains for. This is what they have been praying from places to places for. That they should be released from spiritual what? Wilderness. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved, many have been wondering why prayers seem not to work. Many have been wondering why marriage seems not to be possible. Many have been wondering why with diverse experiences that they have acquired, trainings, exposure, business is not working. Business is not recording profit. Many have been wondering why with all their prayers, consecration, spiritual exercises, nothing seems to be working. It may be that such people are spiritually trapped in the wilderness. Amen. And beloved, one major challenge which is we can make somebody miserable, we can make somebody to toil in vain, is to be spiritually trapped in the wilderness. If for, it's for that person to be in the spiritual world, wilderness. Amen. It's one of the worst things that can happen to any man to be trapped where? In spiritual wilderness. Amen. It is similar to the account of the children of Israel when they were in Babylon. They were in Babylon and they spoke of what happened to them in Psalm 137 verses 3 to 4 when they were in the wilderness, in Babylon. The experience of one in the, in the spiritual wilderness can be likened to what they experienced. In Psalm 137 verse 3, they were in Babylon and they said, for there, that is in Babylon, they that carried us away captive required of what? Us a song. And they that wasted us required us what? Of us met. Say, you know, make merry. Saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. What was their response? Verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Beloved, spiritual wilderness is being in a strange land. And it's difficult to sing the Lord's song <laughs> in spiritual wilderness. It's difficult to give testimonies in spiritual wilderness. It's difficult to shout, praise the Lord. In spiritual wilderness. When you shout it, you are shouting artificially. You are just encouraging yourself to the Lord. You are in the Lord. You are just trying to be brave and to be bold. You are just trying to be positive when you shout it. And you are in what? Spiritual wilderness. Let's attempt to describe what spiritual wilderness is like. Beloved, the way you can understand it is to just picture uh, what will happen to a man or a woman that is in the physical wilderness 
or to cast your mind back to the experiences of the children of Israel when they passed through the wilderness, when they wandered through the wilderness. Let's look at some descriptions quickly of the wilderness, which is what happens to anyone who is in spiritual world, wilderness. Amen. Uh, Psalm 107 verse 4. We just pick some scriptures and we'll bring out uh, the descriptions of what happens in the wilderness. Psalm 107 verse 4. It says what? They wandered in the wilderness. They did what? They wandered. So the first description is that it's a place where people wander. Even go about aimlessly. You know what it means to wander? Just go about aimlessly. You are going about for no purpose particularly. Just wandering. Just meandering. Just wasting time. Just wasting life. Just wasting resources. Amen. People wander. So physically, when you see somebody just wandering, you cannot really say why, he, what he or she is doing. You know, the, the, even what he or she is doing does not bring out anything purposefully. That person may be in a spiritual what, uh, wilderness. When you continue with that verse, it says, in a solitary way, which means, number two, a wilderness is a solitary place, a dry place, solitary. You don't have people inhabit that place. People don't live there. It's a place that is deserted, a solitary place. So when one is in spiritual wilderness, that place is on his own does not really have help, does not really come like that because the person is isolated. You may be in the midst of people. It will be as if you are not there. They may not recognize you. They may not reckon with you because spiritually, you are in a solitary place, a dry place. When you complete that verse, it says, they, it says, they found no city to dwell in. No city to dwell in. So one who is in spiritual wilderness, number three, that person does not have comfort. No place to dwell in. There is no comfort for the one who is in spiritual wilderness. Comfort in marriage, comfort in business, comfort in health at times, comfort financially is not there for the person who is in what? Spiritual wilderness. Let's move on to verse 5 of Psalm 107 to see the next uh, description there. Psalm 107, verse 5. It says, There, 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 there is, is hunger, hunger what? and thirst. So, so terrible, terrible that, that the souls, it says, says, hung, it says hungry, hungry and thirsty. thirsty. They are so do, do what? what? Fainted, Fainted in them. them. Hungry, hungry and thirsty in the wilderness. wilderness. They are so do what? Fainted in them. So, so number four is that in spiritual wilderness there is hunger and thirst. And so terrible that, that souls of the, of the people fainted in them. them. The, the hunger and thirst is not, not only of food. food. It could, it, could finance. Finance. it could be it could of finance. It could be of marriage. Mar it could be of one good thing of life or the other. So people suffer lack to such an extent that they are discouraged. You know, that's what he's trying to say. They suffer lack. That's number four description. Let's go to Psalm 107 verse 6 to look at the next description of the life that is in, in the wilderness, even spiritually. Because physically, you are in the condition of the righteous. Physically, you are at home in a wonderful house well furnished, but spiritually one is in the wilderness, and one will be experiencing all these things that are described. Psalm 107 verse 6, it says, it says, then they cried out unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. So, it's a place of trouble and distress. The wilderness is a place of what? Trouble and distress. One who is in spiritual wilderness will be expressing trouble and distress trouble and distress and at times the person can be perplexed they, ah, ah, only me this one that one this one that one when will all these troubles stop today this one tomorrow that one ah, ah, god is it only me praise the name of the lord, name of the lord. that's, number, that's five. number five let's look at, let's number, look at six. number six as we consider chapter, chapter eight, eight verse 15, verse 15. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter eight, 8, verse, verse 15, 15, to look at, to look the, next at the next description. It says, it says who, led who led thee through that through great, that great and, and terrible what? what? Wilderness. wilderness. We are we 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 fearing serpents, serpents and, scorpions, and scorpions and drought. And drought. We are we there, was there was no water, no water. Who, who brought, 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 out, out, who who brought, brought forth water, water out of, out the, of rock, the rock of flint. Of flint. The wilderness was described as terrible. terrible. So, so number six is that in the wilderness there is due exposure. 
to danger, danger and attacks. And attacks. Just, as, just we have as we have good with wilderness. wilderness, you have you the scorpions, scorpions there, there, you have the you serpents, serpents there, there, you have you terrible, terrible animals, animals that, can, that, can, that are so that are ferocious. ferocious. They can, they before can, before a man, they can sting, sting a man, a to, man death. to death. The same, the same way, somebody, somebody who is, who is, is without wilderness is exposed to spiritual attacks. Today, they hit the person on the head in the dream. Tomorrow, something beats the person. You know, I still pray for somebody not too long ago. Pains in the leg that came through a uh, termite bat in the dream. The person was beaten by termite in the dream and woke up and the place, the leg was still purplish, even for weeks. Even for weeks. You know, so spiritually, that happened in the realm of the spirit. One who is in evilness is exposed spiritually, can be stung by any uh, spiritual uh, creature, spiritual animal. Serpent can sting the person in the dream and it will manifest physically. Poison can be released into the body of that person in the realm of the spirit. So there is undue exposure. That is number six. Number seven, as we can pick from there, is that there is drought. There is lack of basic things of life. We're told there that there is drought, no water, you know, no, no water, and there is drought. So somebody who is a spiritual wilderness will lack or may lack uh, basic things of life. Basic things of life. The person will lack, you know, to survive will be tough for that person because water is very basic to live in. When somebody is in their need of basic things of life, to be able to even have shelter, to have accommodation, to have food, to have clothing, is becoming difficult for that person. Ah, I submit to you that the person may be in spiritual world, wilderness. Let's pick other descriptions of the person who is in spiritual uh, wilderness. Let's see more description of that person who is in spiritual wilderness. Genesis 21, verses 14 to 15. Genesis 21, 14 uh, to 15. He says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took what? And took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered where? In the wilderness. Wandering the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Number, point number eight there is that it is a place of insufficiency. There is nothing you have that is enough when you are in spiritual wilderness. I remember at the time I was in spiritual wilderness with some of my friends we were in business, we were partners, you know, and some of us, we had, uh, we had what it took to run that business successfully. We were all experienced, we were ex-bankers, and we came together to run that business. You know, we were all experienced. The one that had least experience among us had 13 years of banking experience, and from one of the, from the best banks, talking about NIB City Bank of Nigeria then, before it became NIB, talking of GT Bank and another bank. Praise God. So we came together. But believe you me, every month we were only able to earn profit enough to pay our staff. We only earn profit enough to pay our staff. Month after month, going to a year. Because we were all like, like what? In the wilderness. Because we had similar challenges. Praise God. It was so terrible. You know, if we had to go for lunch, we have to ask ourselves, please, who is able to sponsor lunch today? You know? And then um, one or it will one person to buy lunch for three people. And that person will look at who could do that. It was such a terrible life, you know. In years past, until the Lord rescued me. So when one is in wilderness, nothing is enough. You don't have enough. You don't have enough. Praise God. Whatever you have, we quickly finish. And there is no easy hope of what? Replenishment. Just like it was for Hagar. The water in the bottle was finished. No hope of replenishment, you know until the Lord intervene. What is the ninth point? Ninth way of describing life in spiritual wilderness. Let's look at Lamentation chapter 5, verse 9. Lamentation chapter 5, verse 9. We want to look at that life that is in the wilderness. What other description do we have? Lamentation chapter 5, verse 9 says, We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of what? The wilderness to eat. Say we got our, our bread. We were able to get our living. 
at the expense of salt in the wilderness. Praise God. Expense of, at the expense of our lives because of the salt in the wilderness. Beloved, any life that is in spiritual wilderness, it is tough for that life. It is very tough to survive. Life in the wilderness is full of struggle. I, you know, you'll be hearing them struggling. They, they struggle, they struggle, they struggle. To be able to pay rent is struggle. To be able to do this is struggle. It is a life of struggle. Amen. A life of what? Struggle. Life of struggle. That's one way to know a life that is in what? The wilderness. Are you struggling or usually struggling to get married? Struggling to feed? Struggling to uh, sustain your, your, your family? Struggling in your academics? It could be that one has been trapped in spiritual world wilderness. What is point number 10? Jeremiah 17 verse 6. Jeremiah 17 verse number 6. It says, For it shall be like the earth in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the patch places in the wilderness, in the salt land, and not inhabited. This is very terrible. Amen. <laughs> it says, You shall not see when good cometh. Beloved, breakthrough is hard for a life that is in the wilderness. For that life that is in the wilderness to break through, it is hard. I am telling you, not because only the Bible says it, I have seen it. I have experienced it. I have seen the cost of ministry. Where we try, we pray, we minister to people, nothing was happening until the Lord said, look, 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 see and get vision of lives in the wilderness. Praise God. Praise God. We ran a brother through liberation ministered to him powerfully, did everything that we could do, but it was still struggling. It was still struggling. We now embarked on serious inquiry prayer. And the Lord showed him he was in the wilderness. He was in a desolate place. He was the only one there, like Hamlet. He was now going up and down alone, like in a village setting. Hamlet, nobody there. The place was deserted. I said, God, God said, can you see? He's in the wilderness, spiritually. What you are just seeing him, everything he's doing physically, nothing is going to happen. The real him is where? In the wilderness. Amen. He's trapped there. He's trapped there. That's the real him. The one you are seeing is just what? It's just, um, uh, it's a fake. Praise God. We'll come to that. So, he says, he shall not see when good comment. To break through maritally. I saw another sister. We're ministering also. There was no reason. Why this sister shouldn't be married, humanly speaking. I'm telling the truth. Kept herself for Christ, known the Lord very early, serving God. He will read the Bible, finish the Bible severally before the year ends. Gone through everything, no marriage. Until after a series of prayers, of religious, deep relational prayers. And she was also seen in the wilderness. Just there. Just um, going about in a desert place. So, her spirit person has been trapped in the wilderness. Someone who's been trapped in the wilderness, who is going to see that person? That person will not see when good comes. That's what the Bible says. So, financial breakthrough, marital breakthrough, breakthrough in fruitfulness, breakthrough in academics, for somebody who is trapped in the wilderness, is a mirage. We'll just be, we'll, we'll just be elusive. The person will pray, 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 because until you address this and bring the man out, the real man, you're joking, nothing will happen. Praise the name of the Lord. That place is, the person will not see when good comments. I pray for you. If you are in such situation today, the Lord is bringing you out. In the name of Jesus. Let's look at one or two more. There are very many more. But let's take one or two because of our time. So that we have enough time to pray. We have enough time to pray. What is the 11th point or description? Of a life in the wilderness. Psalm 107, verse 40. Psalm 107, verse 40. It says, What? He poured contempt upon the princes and caused them to do what? To wander in the wilderness. Where there is what? Where there are plenty of ways. No way. <laughs> no way. No way. Where there is no way. Praise God. There is nothing like I will get solution inside the wilderness. No. <laughs> there is no solution in the wilderness. 
the only remedy for a wilderness life is to get out of it. Is to be released out of it. There is no solution. That is why if you are in the wilderness, if you don't get out, whatever every, 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 anyone is trying to help you do to, as, a, as a solution is a waste of time. Praise God. That was why God had to lead them through the wilderness. He didn't keep them in the wilderness. He led them through the wilderness to pass through. They were not, he didn't create house for them in the wilderness. Amen. Praise God. He led them through. In the wilderness, there is what? No way. No way in the wilderness. Tell somebody, say no way. No way. <laughs> Praise God. No way in the wilderness. No solution in the wilderness. It's only to get out. What is the twelfth one? That's where we stop. As by description. The twelfth description. Numbers 14, verse 32. Numbers 14, verse 32. It says what? Say, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Wow. That one is terrible. It is what? It's terrible. The wilderness is a place where carcasses fall. It's a place where lives are wasted. It's a place where families are wasted. Where people are wasted. Where resources are wasted. Where businesses are wasted. Businesses crumble in the wilderness. Marriages crumble in the wilderness. When they are brought into the wilderness, they crumble. Resources are wasted in the wilderness. It's a place where carcasses fall. If you are looking for a place of wasted life, it will be in the wilderness. Praise God. When people take wilderness, when they go through the wilderness, they, 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 they go using the car, they, they, those who traverse the deserts, they will see skulls, they will see carcasses of animals, human beings, wreckages of vehicles, you know, that's a place of wastage because nothing thrives there. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, a life in the wilderness is terrible. It is miserable. And when the enemy really wants to box a man to a corner or a woman, when the enemy really wants to finish a person, he casts that person into what? Spiritual wilderness. Or cast an aspect of that person. He could cast the person's resources, finances, or business, or marriage, or fruitfulness, into the what? Into the wilderness. You know? And that is done spiritually. But today, any such work that has been done to your life, the Lord is going to rescue in the name of Jesus. The Lord will rescue in the name of Jesus. You ask me, Pastor, how are people cast into spiritual wilderness? How are they thrown into spiritual wilderness? It's not a physical thing. Just like we said, it's a spiritual wilderness. So it is done spiritually. At times, some people's souls are trapped or programmed. God asked, God, I say, God, how is this possible? He said, it's through the work of sorcery and witchcraft. Some people's souls are trapped. And some souls, people's souls are programmed. Right. So they will be living, but they will be living in the wilderness. He said, then, for some people, their spirits are arrested. And they wander about in the wilderness. That the spirit that is operating in them is not the real spirit. That their real spirit is in the wilderness. Just like the people I saw. Saw that lady moving about. Saw that man whose uh, businesses were, I mean, were not working in the wilderness, in, the, in dry places. Praise God. There was somebody also that I got to minister to. I just noticed a trend about this person. Apart from all other challenges, this person uh, slight rebuffs help. When you want to help this person, the person will do something that will abort it. Once another person wants to help this person, the person will do something that will push the person away. A life that was rejecting help. So I gave the person some prayers to take. I said, come, share your resume with me. And the person came and said, I found myself in the forest. My hands were tied, my legs were tied, and I was tied to a tree. I said, no wonder. How can somebody who is in the forest receive help? The real person has been tied and hung on a tree in the forest. So I'm telling you how they do it. It's not as if they carry that physically. They could carry a doll and through sorcery and witchcraft, call her spirit in and go and tie, they could tie the leg of that doll and the hands and go and hang it in the forest. And they have called the life of that person, the spirit of that person there. So that's how it happens. Through the work of sorcery, through the work of witchcraft, 
through manipulation. And you say, ah, Pastor, how is it possible? Or why is it possible that they could arrest a person and cast the person inside spiritual wilderness? Let's look at the word of God. Hebrews 3, verses 17 and 18. Why it is possible. Hebrews 3, 17 to 18. It says, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that, sin that had sinned? Whose carcasses did what? Fell in the wilderness. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that what? That believe not. The, the, there are two categories of involvements that make people to be arrested and put in the, um, in the wilderness spiritually. Number one is personal what? Involvement. Two what? Personal involvement. That is what people do by themselves. Personal involvement. Under personal involvement, the first thing is when one is not what? It's not saved and is still living in sin. If a person is not saved, is not born again, if the person is still living in sin, it is easy for the devil to put you in spiritual wilderness because you are like a free meat for the devil. That's why you are encouraged to give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ by repenting from your sin, inviting Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, and you, have, you quit sinning, then God will be able to defend you. So when one is still living in sin and not born again, then that person is a ready-made candidate for spiritual wilderness. Number two, is when somebody is already saved, but the person goes back to sin. You say the person backslides. That person is also uh, had escaped before, but now makes himself or herself available for the devil to put in the, in, the, in the wilderness. Because sin is, as we saw, is a major. Sin made them, they were told to pass through, through, the, through wilderness. But because of their sin, they remain in the wilderness, they die there. Praise God. Then number three is when a saved person, a saved person falls into the trap of the devil through diverse transactions. A saved person, you are born again, but you fall into the traps of the devil through diverse transactions. It could be through covenant, it could be through consumption, whatever it may be. When you fall into the trap of the devil, you enter into the devil's covenant unconsciously. You know, through what you consume, through places you visited, through things you applied on your body, through things you attached to your body, through incision, through diverse things that people do, particularly when they go about to try and solve problems, try and find solutions to their challenges. Very many things that people do eventually ensnare them and make them to enter into what? Traps of the devil. You know, very many. Some people go for spiritual bath. Some people will go, do all manner of things. Go and bury something. Go and throw something somewhere. And through those things, they enter into the trap of the devil. So, through any of those means, one can get into what? Into spiritual what? Wilderness. Praise God. Personally. By one's handiwork. Let's look at the foundational involvement. Foundational involvement. We mean the involvement, uh, getting involved with uh, spiritual wilderness through what one's parents, one's guardians, one's ancestors, or people who had authority from one's, uh, in one's lands could have done. Let's look at Numbers 14, verses 32 to 33. Numbers 14, 32 to 33. Uh, getting into the wilderness through foundational involvement. Numbers 14 from verse 32. It says, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this world wilderness. Those are direct ones because they sin against God. But look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. It says, and who? Your children. The children did not do anything, no. But because of what the parents did, and your children shall also do what? Wonder in this wilderness. For how long? 40 years. During those 40 years, those who were born in the first year, they would have given birth. So their own child, who would be the grandchild of the parents, you know, or grandchild of the parents, they will also partake in wandering in the wilderness. Praise God. But the wilderness thing was brought about by who? By the parents or the eventual grandparents. So we see that uh, the, the wandering of the children 
or the grandchildren now, for about 40 years, was occasioned by what the parents did, what the grandparents did. Beloved, this is still happening today. It's not an Old Testament thing. Many today are trapped in spiritual wilderness, not by what they did. They are living right. Not by what, uh, what their parents did at times. Some by what their parents did. But most, most importantly, most people by what grandparents did, what great-grandparents did, what was done from the lands where they hail from, they are in spiritual what? Wilderness. Just as it happened to uh, those people. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. So besides, beloved, besides these two, we still have uh, the third case where people who have spiritual authority over one's life can through the acts of wickedness cast one into what? Spiritual wilderness. The first one is personal. The second one is foundational. But we have the third one which is exceptional. People who have what? Spiritual authority. They could acquire their spiritual authority <laughs> maybe from God. They could acquire it from the devil because spiritual authority from God are being misused to these days. And people speak into people's lives because they have anointing and cast them their life into wilderness. It could be through satanic means, through occultism. They acquire authority with the exercise over one who is subject to them and they cast that person's life, cast that person's marriage. It could even be through the authority of parents because parents have authority over their children. It could be misused at times. And maybe the parents offended them or because of evil they wanted to do, wanted to use the life of their children as exchange for one thing. Because we have come across very many of these things and we must tell you the truth. We have parents who are wicked. We have grandparents who are wicked, who have, with the authority they have, cast their children's um, lives, marriages, fruitfulness, progress, finances, into spiritual wilderness. And they are wondering about. And the, the same parents will say, ah, ah, well, eh, well done. Would you try this mountain? Would, and they are the ones that have cast the life of that person in the wilderness. And the person is going about miserable, wondering. Nothing is happening because the person is what? Is in the wilderness. But I tell you today, you know, whatever life that has been cast into the wilderness, using satanic authority, author evil authority, whatever authority, the Lord is delivering in the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver in the name of Jesus. I know of somebody very, very intelligent who could not graduate because he was cast into the wilderness spiritually. You know, he was just wondering. Sat for this exam, he failed. People that he thought passed went for it again. People were when he told them, the people they know, come off it. You are the one that taught us all this now. You taught all of us how you couldn't have failed. Alas, he failed. He went to another location to retake it. He failed. I know of another person. He was the best student in their school. Everybody left. They said, let us first of all check this person's result. Alas, he failed woefully. The shame was so much that he just carried his things and went out of the country. It was too much. Amen. And people cannot put two and two. What? How could it happen? When one is in spiritual wilderness, failure is what? It's imminent. But beloved, I have good news for us. No matter how terrible one has been cast into spiritual wilderness, Psalm 107 verse 6, verse 6 and 7, they, it, they have good news for us. It says, then, in Psalm 107 verse 6, it says, then they cried unto the Lord. Just as we are going to cry to the Lord this morning. In their trouble, and he delivered them what? Out of their distresses. And in verse 7, he says, and he led them forth by the right way. God is going to lead us by the right way. He will lead you out of the wilderness. He said that they might go to what? A city of habitation. You will come out of the wilderness where there is no habitation. Where there is no comfort. God will lead you to your right place. To your place of testimony. To your city of habitation. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is going to happen today. It will deliver you from the wilderness. It will lead you out of the wilderness to your promised land. Look at also uh, what he says in as Isaiah 51 verse 3. Isaiah 51 verse 3 is also good news. He says, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. The Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort us. Zion is the church of God. He will comfort all her waste places. It will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. 
joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Lastly, let's look at the good news in Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. That's what the Lord is going to do this morning. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. The Lord is going to move in your life. He's going to bring an end to your wilderness journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah 43 from verse 18. It says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider what? The things of old. Yeah, why is the Lord saying so? That forget about your pains. Forget about your sorrows. Forget about, ah, I was once a spinster. I was once a bachelor. Forget about how I used to wait for somebody to send money to me. How I would have to call on one uncle and wait for a lot. How I have to wait before I could pay my rent, pay my uh, bills. He says, for, do what? Remember you not <coughs> the former things. Neither consider what? The things of old. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. Today it shall spring forth. That new thing shall spring forth. And what is that new thing? It says what? I will even make what? A way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Today God is going to make way in your wilderness. It will make way in your wilderness. It will make ways in your wilderness. And you will come out of it. And you will enter your promised land. Today, you will forget the sorrows. You will forget the pains of the wilderness. It will make ways for you. And you will get out in Jesus' name. Let's rise to our feet now. So that we cry to him. He said we will cry to him and he will do that. We want to cry to our God. Who is able to save us from the wilderness. Uh -huh. All the cases I share with you, they cry to God. God brought them out. God brought them out. You will cry to God today also. And the Lord is going to bring you out. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard. Say, Father, I thank you for what my ears have heard. Thank you, O Lord, my Father. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Oh, yes. That's why I said you should congratulate yourself. Because God will use you to re-announce that liberation hour has started physically. That we have started our physical gathering at 113 Allen Avenue. Yes, God is going to use you by what he's going to do in your life this morning. You are going to go to tell your neighbors. Say, neighbor, <laughs> things have turned around. Neighbor, it's rejoice with me. My wilderness is over. That will be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. So you are going to begin to pray. And your, the first prayer means that you are going to fire is this. You say, my father, my father, my father. Say, my father, my father, my father. Concerning being trapped in spiritual wilderness. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Concerning being trapped in spiritual wilderness. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. Concerning being trapped. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me. Concerning being trapped. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say, O oh Lord, my Father. By your mercy. Shine your light into my life and my foundation. Shine your light into my life and my foundation in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and talk to God. Shine your light, O oh Lord, into my life and my foundation. Shine your light. Shine your light. Shine your light. Shine your light into my life and my foundation. Father, shine your light. Father, shine your light. Father, shine your light. Into my life and my foundation. Shine your light, O oh God. Shine your light, O oh God. Shine your light, O oh God. Into my life and my foundation. Father, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Lord, shine your light. Into my life 
into my foundation. Shine your light, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. By your mercy, O Lord, reveal to me any aspect of my life that is trapped in the wilderness in the name of Jesus Christ. When God reveals to you, you'll be able to address that improperly. By your mercy, O Lord, reveal to me any aspect of my life. You know, I told you when that woman saw herself in the forest, ah, she prayed very well. She prayed very well. When the man who was uh, uh, MD CEO saw himself, he didn't understand. And I told him, I explained the, the dream to him. Ah, he said, Pastor, whatever prayer you ask me to pray, I will pray. Whenever, whenever, just tell me, I will pray. <laughs> because he now understood why things were not working, why all efforts were wasted, why it had been struggled all the years. Praise God. Say, by your mercy, O Lord, reveal to me any aspect of my life that is trapped in the wilderness in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. Is it finances? Is it marriage? Is it your business? Is it your certificate? Is it the work of your hands? Reveal to me any aspect of my life that is trapped in the wilderness. Reveal. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. A man was wondering each time he applied for a job. He was a graduate. They won't take him for any job that befits him as a graduate. They'll be offering him jobs that should be for school site holder. And after many years, he said to take the job. Once he applied for a graduate job, they won't take him. If he decided to change job, only the one that was for what? School sat. We, we go through. Until he prayed, he now saw that the BSc certificate was taken to, to the bush and nailed to the tree there. So he couldn't walk. As far as things were concerned, that certificate was in the wilderness. He didn't have it with him. He only, what he had, the physical paper he had was, it was, was fake. The real one, spiritually, is in the desert. Praise God. And it was addressed and removed spiritually. He will see, say, I'm a graduate pastor. Look at, I'm a graduate. But no graduate work was coming. Praise God. Somebody will say, I'm, 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 I'm married. Look at my ring. But they always treat me as if I'm single. <laughs> Praise God. Marriage is in where? In the wilderness. You will cry to God. Say, by your mercy, O Lord. Reveal to me. What made me a candidate of spiritual wilderness? In the name of Jesus, by your mercy, O Lord, reveal to me what made me a candidate of spiritual wilderness. Lord, reveal it to me. You need to know why it is so before you can get out. Reveal to me what made me a candidate of spiritual wilderness. Maritally, financially, spiritually, in whatever way, Father, reveal to me what made me a candidate. What took my life to wilderness? Spiritually, oh Lord, reveal to me, oh Lord, reveal to me, oh Lord, reveal to me what made me mentally to be in the wilderness. Spiritually, Father, reveal it to me what took my business to the wilderness, what took my finance to the wilderness, what took my ministry to the wilderness. Oh Lord, reveal to me, reveal to me, oh Lord God, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. I hope you are praying. You will cry to God again. We are asking God for revelation because revelation brings about transformation. When you have the vivid thing that happened, then your prayers will be targeted. Praise God. We will cry to God. Say, by your mercy, O Lord, reveal to me what made it possible for the enemy to put me in spiritual wilderness. Reveal to me what made it possible for the enemy to put me in spiritual wilderness? In the name of Jesus, let's open our mouth and talk to God. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal what made it possible for the enemy to put me in spiritual wilderness. 
Lord, reveal to me. Lord, reveal to me what made it possible for the enemy to put me in the wilderness. Oh, Lord, reveal it to me. Oh, Lord, reveal it to me. Reveal to me, oh, Lord, my Father, what made it possible for the enemy to put me in the wilderness. Lord, reveal to me. Lord, reveal to me. Lord, reveal to me. Reveal to me, reveal to me. What made it possible for the enemy to put me in the wilderness? Oh, Lord, reveal to me. Oh, Lord, reveal to me. In the name of Jesus, what did I do that made it possible for the enemy to put me in the wilderness? What did my father do? What did my mother do? What did my guidance do? What did my grandparents do? Lord, how was it possible for me to be arrested into spiritual wilderness? Oh, Lord, reveal it to me. Oh, Lord, reveal it to me. How was it possible for my mother to be arrested into the wilderness? For my child to be arrested into the wilderness? For my finance to be arrested into the wilderness? For my health to be arrested? Lord, reveal it to me. What made it possible? Reveal it to me. What made it possible? In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, reveal. Oh, Lord, reveal. Oh, Lord, reveal. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 We read that sin, iniquity, a major instrument of the wilderness life. If we must get out there, we must repent. We must obtain forgiveness from God. Those sins or iniquities that we committed by ourselves, the carelessness of entering to the trap of the devil, we must repent. We must also repent of the ones committed by our parents, by our guidance. So you will cry to God now. Say, by your mercy, O Lord. Lord. Forgive me of personal sins and iniquities. Personal transactions that made me to be arrested into the wilderness. Oh Lord, forgive me of personal sins, personal iniquities, personal transactions that made it possible for me to be arrested into the wilderness. Oh Lord, forgive me. Oh Lord, forgive me. Oh Lord, forgive me. Let's open them out and ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. In the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. What I did by myself. Where I went by myself. Covenant I entered into by myself. Iniquity I committed by myself. How I used my mouth wrongly. How I entered into sin. Father, forgive me. That made me to be arrested. Made my marriage to be arrested. Made my child to be arrested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of places I went into. Forgive me of things I consumed. Forgive me of things I applied. Forgive me of things I used. That made my life. Made my marriage. Made my fruitfulness. Made my finances. Made my business. Made the work of my hands to be arrested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of covenant I enter into. Relationships I enter into. That made my life to be arrested. Oh Lord, forgive. Forgive, oh Lord, forgive. Forgive, oh Lord, forgive. Of covenant I entered into. Of visitations I made. Of consumptions. Of incisions. Of evil barrier. Of whatever I did, oh God. That made me to be arrested. Father, forgive me today. Oh Lord, forgive me. I repent in dust and ashes. Forgive me, forgive me of that wrong step that I took. Father, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, my father. Forgive me, my father. Lord, I am sorry. Forgive me today. Forgive me today. Forgive me today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are also going to ask God to forgive us. Now, of what our parents did, look at those parents, they did, committed that sin in the wilderness. And God said, they will waste away for 40 years. They will waste away there. And that for 40 years, their children will be wasting away, wandering in the wilderness. Some people are wandering today. 
They are not able to get married because of what one father or one mother did. Because of what one grandparents did. They are wondering about with respect to marriage, with respect to fruitfulness, with respect to breaking forth financially for what they did not do, but because of the sons or daughters of whom they are. So you will cry to God. If you must escape it, you must repent of the sins. They could have died. It doesn't matter. Because it works with the principle of God. You will cry to God. Say, oh Lord, my Father, by your mercy, forgive me of the sins and iniquities, of the transactions, of my parents, of my guardians, of my ancestors, from my lands that made me to be arrested into the wilderness. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me in the name of Jesus. Let's ask God to forgive. I, I forgive, oh Lord. Some of our parents, they were into idol worship. Idol worshiping. Some of them were into evil covenants. Sacrificing to the devil. Some of them were evil. They shared the blood of other, of other people's children. They shared, they took innocent blood. Some of them were so wicked that they cursed them, cursed their children. Some of them did terrible things that have brought judgment upon their children. Some of them oppressed slaves. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of the sins and iniquities, of the transactions of my parents, of my guardians, of my ancestors, from my lands that sold me out to spiritual wilderness. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Forgive me of those transactions that sold me out to spiritual wilderness. Forgive me today. Forgive me today. What my parents did, what my guardians did, what my ancestors did, that showed me out to spiritual wilderness. Father, forgive today. I am sorry, O God. I am sorry, O God. O Lord, forgive me because of your mercy, because of the finished work of Calvary. Forgive me because of the shed blood of Jesus. Forgive me today. Forgive me, my Father. Let these things are iniquities. Let them pass me by. Let them pass me by. Let them pass me by. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Rise to your feet now and take these prayers uh, very, very aggressively. Amen. Amen. This one, you will make declaration and make it and mean what you are saying. Because there will be no basis for God to deliver you if you are still part and parcel of what they did or what was done in time past that brought about spiritual wilderness. So you will declare like this. Say, I. I. Now mention your name. I, I Daniel Kola Kobilu. I renounce, I, renounce. I, reject. I reject, and I separate myself, I separate myself. From, all from all the sins and iniquities, from all the covenants, all the from all other transactions, all transactions, either by myself or by parties in my foundation, my foundation. that made me to be arrested, to be arrested. into spiritual wilderness. Into spiritual I renounce them. I reject them. I separate from them. I am no longer part of them. All the sins, all the iniquities, all the agreements, all the covenants, all the vows, all the pledges, all the exchanges that were made by myself, by my parents, by my guardians, by my ancestors, from my lands, that made me to be arrested into spiritual wilderness that made any part of my life my marriage, my fruitfulness my finance my career, my education my progress to be arrested I, Daniel Kola Kobilo, I renounce them, I reject them I separate from them I renounce, I reject I separate, I renounce I reject I separate in the name of Jesus. One more. Say I. Daniel Kola Kobilu. Call your name. I renounce. I reject whatever relationship that empowered anyone to be able to throw me into spiritual wilderness. That relationship. I renounce it today. I reject it today. I separate from it. I renounce that relationship that empowered that person. 
and that gave power to that personality, to that power, to that principality, to be able to cast me, cast my marriage, cast my finance, cast any aspect of my life into spiritual wilderness. I renounce it. I reject it. I separate from it. I separate from it. I separate from it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mention your name again. Say I. Daniel Kola Kobelu. I withdraw whatever consent or authority that I gave or that was given on my behalf by my parents to anyone, to any personality. Allowing such personality to throw me to the wilderness. I withdraw it today. I withdraw the consent. I withdraw the authority. I withdraw the consent. I withdraw the authority. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Say whatever was done by anyone, by any power, living or dead, to put my life in spiritual wilderness. Put my marriage, my finance, my progress in any area of life in spiritual wilderness. Whatever was done right now by the power and the blood of Jesus, I cancel you. 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 Be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Be canceled. Aha. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Yes. Cancel whatever was done. Cancel whatever was done. Cancel whatever was done. By the blood of Jesus. Cancel it. Cancel it. Yes. Be canceled. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. We are taking it one more time. Because that thing that was done must be cancelled. By those who usurp authority or power to forcefully cast us there, what they did must be destroyed. Amen. Once you have said one more time, be saying be cancelled. And to be cancelled. Say whatever was done by anyone by any, by any power, living or dead, that made me or any aspect of my life to be in spiritual wilderness because it is written. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Revelation 12, verse 11. Revelation 12, 11. That we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Right now, Whatever was done with the blood of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus, be cancelled, 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 be cancelled. Yes, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. Yes, cancel it now, cancel it now. Aha. Karuba Shenda. Rakuri Bashanda. Yes. Be cancelled. Yes. Work of sorcery. Work of witchcraft. Manipulative work. In the waters. On the earth. Under the earth. In the heavens. In the forest. Wherever. On the mountains. In the hills. Be cancelled. Be cancelled now. Be cancelled now. By the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Take this final prayer now. Amen. Make sure you pray it as if you don't pray again. <laughs> Say from any spiritual wilderness where the enemy has put me or has put any aspect of my life. If you suspect a particular aspect of your life that may be in wilderness, whether it is marriage, 
make sure you mention that aspect the more. I has put my marriage. Unable to not allow me to get married. I has put my child bearing. Not allow me to be fruitful. I has put my resources. I has put my finances. I has put my certificate. Oh Lord, loose me and bring me out. When you have said it one whole time, you will say, loose me. Bring me out. Loose me. Bring me out. Loose me. Bring me out. God has promised to loose and to bring out. And he will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to take it? Amen. 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 Say, from whatever wilderness, from whatever wilderness that, the that the enemy has put me or put any aspect of my life by power, by fire. fire. Oh, Lord, my Father. In the name of Jesus. Loose me. Bring me out. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. From any wilderness that the enemy has put any aspect of my life. Oh, Lord. By power, by fire. In the name of Jesus. Loose me and bring me out. Loose me, 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 bring me out. Open your mouth and pray now. Loose me and bring me out. Loose my marriage. Loose my childbearing. Loose my finance. Loose my childbearing. Lose my work. Lose my business. Lose my children. Lose my spouse. Yes. Lose my helpers. Lose. Lose. Lose me. Lose me. Lose me. Lose me. Lose me. Lose me. Bring me out. 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 Lose me. Loose me and bring me out. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. You will take it one more time. God is already working. Conquer every battle for me. Conquer every battle for me. Never leave any. Never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. Never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. Conquer every battle for me. Never leave any. Never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. Never leave any. Conquer every battle for Jehovah me. Jehovah never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. My father never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. My father never leave any. Conquer every battle for me. Conquer every battle for me. Conquer every battle for me. Never leave any. I never leave any. I never leave any. I never leave for me. I never leave any. for me. I never leave any. I for me. Thank you. 
God. Say, my father, my father, my father. My life can no longer remain in the wilderness. Arise. Bring me out. When you have said it one more time, we say, bring me out. <laughs> He's going to bring you out right now. Amen. Say, my father, my father, my father. My life can no longer remain in the wilderness. Arise. Bring me out. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, bring me out. Oh, Lord, bring me out. Oh, Lord. Bring me out. Oh Lord, bring me out. Arise, bring me out. Arise, bring me out. Arise, bring me out. Open your mouth and I'm going to bring you out. Karuba shekere boshinda. Rekeke pokotaya baba. Yes, Lord. Bring me out. Bring me out. Yes. Right now. Let the hand of God be stretched. Let the hand of God be stretched. From whatever wilderness that the enemy has cast you. Cast your marriage. Cast your child bearing. Let the Lord bring you out. Let the Lord bring you out. Let the Lord bring you out. Thou power of God. Move now. Thou power of God. Move now. Begin to bring out. Begin to bring out your sons. Your daughters out of spiritual wilderness bring out marriages bring out wombs bring out careers bring out education bring out finances bring out the work of hands bring out ministries bring out homes in the name of jesus yes come out of wilderness jump out of wilderness come out of wilderness jump out jump out jump out jump out Yes, Lord. I so karia mashanda. I remo so tayaba. E kerebo shanda pa. Eria mahuria masande kaba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let your amen be super dynamic to seal up what God has done. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says in Romans chapter 4, verse 25, that who was delivered for our offenses, talking about just Christ, and who was raised for our justification. Since Christ has been delivered for the offenses, and has been raised for our justification, Lord, let those offenses as repented of be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Let them be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14, 17 to 18 precisely, you said, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and I will take you as my sons and daughters, and I will be a father to you. Lord, we have renounced and rejected. They have renounced and rejected those transactions that allow them to be brought in. Therefore, arise, Take them as your sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. Take them as your sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. And Lord, there is no father that will look, watch his sons or daughters wander in the wilderness, waste away in the wilderness, marriage wasting in the wilderness, childbearing wasting in the wilderness, finances, certificates, health wasting in the wilderness. Therefore, you said and I will be a father to you. Therefore, oh God, I ask right now, because the scriptures cannot be broken, Lord, arise as a father to everyone who has cried to you, to everyone who has connected, to everyone who has prayed to you, arise as a father. And Lord, I ask, in the name of Jesus, bondages that have held them in the wilderness be dissolved. Yokes that have kept them in wilderness be broken. And whatever aspect of your life that have been kept in wilderness, your entire life, 
your marriage, your childbearing, your finance, your health, your spouse, your children, your ministry, your health, your progress, any aspect of your life that have been killed in the wilderness. Right now, let it be released. Let it be released. We say be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Colossians 2.15 says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. And that is true. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Therefore, I ask, oh God, that all the marriages, all the uh, childbearing, all the destiny, all the life, all the glory, all the prosperity, every everything about your sons and daughters that have been kept in the wilderness. Right now, let them come out in the name of Jesus. Come out! Come out! Jump out! In the name of Jesus, let every man jump out. Managers jump out. Fruitfulness jump out. Finances jump out. Health jump out. Career jump out. Certificate jump out. Progress jump out. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 There is settlement. There is settlement. Not only somebody jumping out. I saw God giving somebody keys. You are not only jumping out. You are jumping out into solutions. Therefore, I pray. Everything you have lost. By virtue of the period in wilderness. Let the Lord restore to you. Let the Lord restore double. Take back 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 double. Take double. Take double. Take double. Take double. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Every attempt of the enemy to lace me for you, to catch you again, to be able to rearrest you, it shall not prosper. The Spirit of God will lead you into your promised land. Lead you into your marriages. Lead you into your prosperity. Lead you into your own promised lands. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. Come on, give Jesus Christ a clap offering for what he has done this morning.